Gaius Julius Phaedrus, Greek, Phaedros was a 1st century CE Roman fabulist and the first versifier of a collection of Aesop's fables into Latin. Few facts are known about him for certain and there was little mention of his work during late antiquity. It was not until the discovery of a few imperfect manuscripts during and following the Renaissance that his importance emerged, both as an author and in the transmission of the fables. Biography. <inaudible> <inaudible> A recent statement of the few facts that past scholars have tried to deduce from autobiographical hints given by Phaedrus in his poems has summarized them as follows He was born in Macedonia, probably in Pydna, about 15 BCE, came to Rome as a slave and was freed by Augustus. He probably had some teaching function between then and the time of Tiberius, under whom the first book of his poems appeared. Envious competitors interpreted the morals of some fables as being critical of the regime and he was tried by Sejanus, probably at the time of the latter's fall. In the prologue to his third book, we find Phaedrus pleading with a certain Eutychus to intercede on his behalf. Surviving the turbulent times into old age, possibly under Caligula and Claudius, he produced two more books and died towards the middle of the first century CE. There is, however, no evidence to support any of this and certain facts conflict with the traditional account. What Phaedrus had to say about himself might as plausibly be reinterpreted to prove that he was born in Rome and spent the whole of his life there as a free citizen. Topic. Work Phaedrus is now recognized as the first writer to compile entire books of fables in Latin, retelling the Aesopic tales in Senary, a loose iambic meter. The dates of composition and publication are unknown. However, Seneca the Younger, writing between 41 and 43 CE, recommended in a letter to Claudius Friedman Polybius that he turn his hand to Latinizing Aesop, a task hitherto not attempted by Roman genius ad Polybium 8.3. This suggests that nothing was known of Phaedra's work at that date. By the mid-80s Marshall was imitating him and mentions his mischievous humor improbi jocos Phaedri. The next reference is a homage by his fellow fabulist Avianus near the start of the 5th century, who claims the five books of fables as one of his sources in the dedication of his own work. A 9th century manuscript of the fables of Phaedrus was only discovered in France towards the end of the 16th century. This was published in 1596 by Pierre Pithau as Fabularum Aesopiarum Libri Quinque and was followed by two more editions before century's end. Near the beginning of the 18th century, a manuscript of the 15th century bishop Niccolo Parodi was discovered at Parma containing 64 fables of Phaedras, of which some 30 were previously unknown. These new fables were first published in 1808, and their versions were afterwards superseded by the discovery of a much better preserved manuscript of Parodi in the Vatican Library, published in 1831. Scholars realized that Phaedra's work had also served as the basis for mediaeval fable collections that went by the name of Romulus and at the start of the 20th century the Swedish scholar Carl Magnus Zander reconstructed 30 additional fables from their prose recensions there. What had survived of Phaedra's five books in Pithau's manuscript was of unequal length and seemed to indicate that material has been lost. This was supported by the apology in the prologue to the first book for including talking trees, of which there are no examples in the text that survives although there was one in the Parodi appendix. In fact only 59 out of 94 in the Pithau manuscript were even animal fables. The author's aim at the start was to follow Aesop in creating a work that moves one to mirth and warns with wise advice. As the work progressed, however, he widened his focus and now claimed to be refining Aesopic material and even adding to it. In later books we find tales of Roman events well after the time of Aesop such as Tiberius and the Slave 2.5 and Augustus and the Accused Wife 3.9 as well as the poet's personal reply to envious detractors IV.21 there are also anecdotes in which Aesop figures from the later biographical tradition 2.3 3.3 IV.5 and items 9 and 20 in Parati's appendix Finally he makes a distinction between matter and manner in the epilogue to the fifth book, commenting that I write in Aesop's style, not in his name, and for the most part won the subject claim. Though, some brief portion Aesop might indict, the more I from my own invention write, the style is ancient but the matter's new, he also claims a place in the Latin literary tradition by echoing well-known and respected writers. 
It is to be noticed, however, that where Phaedrus and the slightly earlier poet Horace adapted the same fable to satirical themes, they often used different versions of it. In Horace a crow cornicula is the subject of the bird in borrowed feathers, in Phaedrus it is a jackdaw graculus. In the case of the horse that lost its liberty, Phaedrus has it disputing with a boar and Horace with a stag. Neither do they agree in their account of the frog and the ox. Horace follows the story found in Greek sources, the frog's motivation is different in Phaedrus, and it is his version that Marshall follows later. Moreover, in following the model of Aesop, the enfranchised slave, Phaedra's satire is sharper and restores the ancient function of the fable as a popular expression against the dominant classes. Another commentator points out that the Aesopian fable has been a political creature from its earliest origins, and Phaedra's, who was La Fontaine's model, though more openly subversive, has claims to be the first proletarian satiric poet. Topic editions The fables of Phaedrus soon began to be published as school editions, both in the original Latin and in prose translation. Since the 18th century, there have also been four complete translations into English verse. The first was by Christopher Smart into octosyllabic couplets, London 1753. Brooke Boothby's The Esopian Fables of Phaedrus were included in his Fables and Satires, Edinburgh, 1809, and also used octosyllables but in a more condensed manner. What Aesop taught his beasts in Greek, Phaedrus in Latin made them speak, in English, I from him translate, and his brief manner imitate. It was followed by the Reverend Frederick Toller's A Poetical Version of the Fables of Phaedrus, London, 1854. These were translated more diffusely into irregular verses of five metrical feet and each fable was followed by a prose commentary. The most recent translation by P. F. Widows also includes the fables in the Parodi Appendix and all are rendered into a free version of Anglo-Saxon alliterative verse. Phaedra's versions were translated individually by a variety of other poets into different languages. A small selection in various poetic forms appeared in the Poems and Translations London 1769 of Ashley Cowper 1701 There were many more poems distinctively styled in La Fontaine's Fables, others followed by Ivan Krylov in Russian, Gregory Skovoroda and Leonid Halibov in Ukrainian, and a more complete collection by Volodymyr Litovanov in 1986. References Topic. Further reading The Fables of Phaedras, with a literal English translation, London 1828 Champlin, Edward. Phaedras the Fabulous. The Journal of Roman Studies 95, 2005, pp. 97-123. Glothier, Patrick. Phaedras, Callimachus and the Recusatio to Success, Classical Antiquity, 28.2, 2009, pp. 248-278. Henderson, John. Phaedras. Fables. The Original Corpus, Nemozine, 52.3, 1999, pp. 308-329. Henderson, John. Telling Tales on Caesar, Roman Stories from Phaedras. Oxford University Press, 2001. Jennings, Victoria. Borrowed Plumes, Phaedra's Fables, Phaedra's Failures. Writing Politics in Imperial Rome. Leiden, Boston, Brill, 2009. Lefkowitz, Jeremy B. Grand Illusions, Virgil in Phaedra's. AJPH 137.3, 2016, pp. 487-509. Lefkowitz, Jeremy B. Innovation and Artistry in Phaedra's Morals. Nemozine 70.3, 2017, pp. 417-435. Libby, Bridget B. The Intersection of Poetic and Imperial Authority in Phaedra's Fables. The Classical Quarterly, 60.2, 2010, pp. 545-558. Polt, Christopher B. Polity Across the Pond, Democracy, Republic and Empire in Phaedra's Fables 1.2. The Classical Journal, 110.2, 2015, pp. 161-190. Topic. External links Pithaus Adidio Princeps, Troyes, Jean Udot, 1596 Works by Phaedras at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks